Huffington Post is reporting on some consequences here for Wells Fargo executives after they engaged in massive, massive fraud. They explain, for the first time since the financial crisis, a big bank is publicly forcing its CEO to give up a small part of his millions in salary and stock, making him take at least some symbolic personal responsibility for misconduct. Wells Fargo CEO and Chairman John Stumpf, hilarious name by the way, will forfeit $41 million in unvested stock, give up his $2.8 million annual salary for a time, and get no bonus this year. The bank announced Tuesday in the wake of a massive scandal. Stumpf is hardly at risk of homelessness, though. He still has his job, much to the consternation of critics, and another $247 million in Wells Fargo stock he's accumulated. On Tuesday, Wells Fargo's uh, board also said that Carrie Tolstead, the executive responsible for the banking unit that had been ripping off customers, was leaving effective immediately, pushing up her retirement date from the end of this year. She will also get no severance pay or bonus for this year, give up $19 million in stock, and won't receive some retirement enhancements. Okay, so uh, I have many thoughts and feelings on this. First of all, is it a, a step in the right direction? Well, absolutely. They were going to get millions of dollars more, and they're not going to get those millions of dollars more. They don't deserve those millions of dollars. So, in some sense, justice, to whatever degree it is. On the other hand, I am a little bit annoyed with just how big of a victory people in the media are pretending this is. Like, there's a lot of, yeah, yes, we got him, we got him, we got him. I don't know about that. You didn't get him. In fact, I don't think you got him at all, really. Again, it's better than nothing, but that's not saying much. That's like somebody goes to a liquor store, steals, let's say, $100 worth of liquor, and then somebody comes along and goes, Hey, okay, come on now. Hold up, hold up. Well, this isn't very fair. Why don't you get back $50 of the worth of the liquor that you stole? Wait, what? Now, is that better than if he, the person who stole it gets to keep the $100 worth of liquor? Yeah. It is. I mean, math is math. But is that rational? Is that, you know, the best possible way to administer justice? Is that the correct answer? No. It would be, okay, all of that gets returned, and now you go to jail. You just stole something. That's not okay. Well, here... Since they're rich people, and they're executives, and they wear suits and ties, and they know the right people, and they, they grease the right palms. That always sounds so dirty. <laughs> but since that's the case, well, okay, a little slappy on the wrist, and then we move along, and everybody shut the fuck up. I've, I've been punished enough. I can't even buy my second home in the Hamptons. You monsters. What have you done to me? It's just so clear that the bar's so low now. I mean, we're talking about... Okay, for Tolstet, who's the executive who headed the agency that did the fraud, opened up all the fake accounts, beefed it up so that they could try to get their bonuses even though they didn't do their job and didn't do their work and didn't actually hit those goals. She already has over a hundred million dollars. She already has that. So now they're like, well, you know, no more for you, missy. <laughs> like, oh, you're so tough, aren't you? No, we got to get serious, man. If they commit a crime on Wall Street and they're effectively robbing hundreds of millions of dollars and in the case of the subprime mortgage crisis and the Great Recession, taking people's homes from them, you know, uh, basically pulling the wool over their eyes, getting them into these predatory loans that they're not, they're not fucking experts in finance. They don't know what they're getting themselves into. And then as a result of it, you know, their lives are ruined. Yeah, there needs to be fucking consequences for that. We need to view it in the same way you'd view just direct robbery or something like that, because that's what it is. Just because you're sitting behind a computer screen and you're wearing a suit and tie doesn't make it any better when you know that your intent is, in many cases, I need to do... Well, in the short term, forget the long-term viability of the economy. Even if I got to do some tricks and pull the wool over some people's eyes, hey, at least I got mine. At least I got paid. Well, that is criminal, especially if you're committing fraud. 
And it's not enough to just say, well, we're going to cut you off now. Or we're in no retirement enhancements for you, Missy. Wow, you're so strong, so tough. No, you got to crack down on him. You got to go after him. You got to let him know fraud is fraud and you're going to spend some time behind bars. None of us are going to hold our breath for that because we die. <laughs> but it's funny how the bar is so low now that when there's just a little bit, and again, this isn't even the government actually, you know, trying to enforce the law. This is Wells Fargo saying, shit, we're in trouble. We got to do some window dressing here to make it look like we took care of it. And that's what it is. That's what they're doing. So better than nothing, but nowhere near enough. And I, I everybody should reel it in with their over-the-top fawning praise.